What's up heroes? In this video, I'm going to show you how to avoid getting distracted. Uh, hold on a second. Oh, wait a minute. I'm supposed to be showing you how not, how to avoid this, how not to get distracted. In order for you to achieve anything you want in life, it's going to come down to your ability to be able to focus on doing good, high quality work. The problem is most people waste four to five hours a day doing busy work or unimportant things. Like Jim Rohn, one of the most famous personal development philosophers of all time, says people major in the minor things, major in the minor things. They spend their big energy doing really small, unimportant, trivial tasks distractions, errands, instead of actually pumping out good high quality work. The most successful people in the world know how to have an intense focus. So in this video, I'm going to show you five ways, my top five ways to rid yourself of distractions, rid yourself of procrastination so you can pump out good quality work every damn day. My name is Jarvis. I'm the Morning Hero, and this is what I do. I show people how to maximize their time, effort, and energy so they can get on to living life extraordinarily. Part of what my main mission in life is to help people avoid wasting so much time. And that comes down to you being able to focus. And let's get started. My number one way for avoiding distractions is something called the zero calendaring method. So this is a way, a technique of how to plan and organize your day. Now I've been doing this for the last five years and I can honestly say this is one of the most life transformational time management techniques that I've ever tried. And I've done a lot. I've experimented with a lot of different ways to organize my day and different tools and softwares and calendars and planners and all kinds of things. And by far this technique called the zero calendaring method is by far the one of the best ways that I found to really organize my day and structure my day so that I have a more clear focus. And so let me tell you what it is. Essentially, it's you know how you most people have a to do list and then they have their calendar. So they have their calendar has all their like important appointments on it. But then their to do list has all this other stuff that they want to get done throughout the day. But their calendar maybe has one or two things on it and the rest of it is blank. What happens in that blank space is that that's where we lose time. The appointments we show up for, we're committed to the appointments, but the rest of the day is just blank and our brain doesn't really know what to do. So what will our brain do when it has too many options? It will resort to doing the easy stuff. And that's where people get sucked into just doing busy work, monitoring email, not really doing good high quality work. So to avoid that, you wanna fill all that blank space in. So essentially you take everything off of your to-do list and you start plucking it onto your calendar and blocking out blocks of time to do the high quality stuff all on your calendar. So by the time you get finished planning out your day, your calendar has zero blank space left on it. And that's why it's called the zero calendaring method, because you're going to have zero space left. And when you're zero blank space, there's very little room for what for time wasting. That's the best thing you could do is at the beginning of the day, methodically plan out an hour by hour what you're going to do. Don't just say, I want to make you know, my cold calls, I want to send out some emails. Don't just have a list with all this stuff. Actually say, I'm going to make my cold calls at 9 a.m. I'm going to follow up with my clients at 10 a.m. Start scheduling those things on your calendar. And that way, when you get to that time slot, your brain and your subconscious is already programmed to do that thing. So now your brain knows exactly what it's going to be working on. And therefore, it doesn't seek a yearn for distractions or email or all these little trivial busy work things that's going to fill that gap. It's going to fill that time with the things that you actually intended to spend that time on. So uh, the zero calendaring method is by far one of the best ways I found to plan and organize your day, set your intentions. And when you set your intentions, you're less likely to waste time and get distracted in those time blocks that you've scheduled for yourself. Number two is the easiest thing you can do. And I'm guilty of this a lot. You know, I'm sitting here doing some work and I glance over and I see my phone every five seconds. I'll pick it up, scroll. I think they said the average person picks up or touches their phone over a thousand times a day. What I normally do now is I come into the office. The first thing I do, I have a desk, I have my suitcase right here. Throw the phone in the suitcase and throw it on the floor. So simple. But the fact that now it's out of my eyesight, whatever's in your eyesight, your brain will yearn for it. Your brain will seek it. So if I see the phone out of the corner of my eye, it will automatically want to grab it to distract. I want to distract myself all the time. So this is a way for you to protect yourself from yourself 
by hiding it. Hide all the distractions out of your line of sight. Whatever is in your line of sight, your brain will try to use it as a distraction. So hide those things out of your line of sight and then therefore your brain won't constantly seek to grab it or seek to distract itself with it. Let me know if you're getting anything out of this. If you're finding this helpful so far, leave a comment and share what you're getting out of this so far. I'd love to hear your feedback. But my number three best way to avoid distractions, and this kind of piggybacks off the last one, I used to work from home. And as an entrepreneur, I kind of set my own schedule. So I work from home. There's a lot of times I'm in the kitchen working at the table or in the dining room at the table working. I don't know if this happens to you, but I find myself, I'm always in the kitchen going to the refrigerator. Like every 15 minutes I get up and I just go open the refrigerator door. Like I just have to go see if something's in the refrigerator that I overlooked. Or I would always like all of a sudden start washing dishes or washing clothes. I hate doing chores, but when I have high quality work I should be doing, now all of a sudden I'm trying to find every other way to distract myself, including cleaning the house. I had to start going to a coffee shop. And that was the best way for me to actually focus was because I had to, what I call, go to work. My third biggest recommendation is to go to work. Go someplace, get out of the house, go into a different environment, change up the scenery, and then that will put you into a different mindset where you can now focus and get higher quality work done. And speaking of distractions, I'm getting a call coming in right now. That is, that's a distraction. The fourth one is setting a timer. Our brains are very kind of analytical. We kind of affix to anything that's counting, counting up or counting down. And so I have an app on my phone called Countdown Timer. I set it and it's these big red numbers on my screen. It takes up the entire screen and I'll set it for, let's say 30 minutes. If I know a task is gonna take 30 minutes, I'll set it for 30 minutes and then it starts counting down. And the minute you have a countdown, it adds urgency. And so my brain looks at that countdown and it's like, oh, okay, I need to, I, let me hurry up and finish working on this because I gotta finish it to beat the clock. It turns it into a game. Like we're very like gamified. We're very driven by this sense of accomplishment and victory from winning a game. And so if you can take any task, you gamify it by setting a clock. And now it's like, you gotta beat the clock. And so, oh, I gotta, I gotta finish writing these emails before the clock hits zero. And so having a visual clock in front of you that's counting down, is now your brain is hyper focused on finishing this task before the countdown sequence. So you don't have time to check Instagram. You don't have time to fumble around with other stuff. You gotta beat the clock. So setting a clock or setting a timer uh, is one of the best, best ways to get zeroed in hyper focus. I, I use this technique every single day. If I gotta do some prospecting or some marketing or I have to do some writing, like things that otherwise I would fight and resist, the minute I set a timer, it puts my brain into a hyper focus mode because I want to beat the clock. The fifth is my favorite. And this one is kind of the cornerstone. Uh, this is why I'm called the morning hero. Uh, the fifth best way to avoid distractions is to wake up early. Now you might be wondering what the hell does that have to do with distractions? Here's the thing. I wake up at 5 a.m. now and I've been doing this for about five years. Before that, I would wake up right around seven. Eight. You know, so I was in sales, so I kind of commanded my own schedule. So I would wake up at seven, eight o'clock sometimes. And by the time I would wake up, the day is already going. Emails are flying in, text messages are flying in, breaking news is happening, people are calling me, distractions are all everywhere. By the time I would wake up, I would wake up right into the fury of the day. And then I hit this point in my life where I just got kind of frazzled and frustrated. I started looking for ways to just get my life back, get my time back. And I kept reading about how all these high achievers, the most successful people in the world all wake up early. That's how they get this edge in life is because they're up and getting a head start before everyone. So I started trying it. And what I found, it was revolutionary. What I found was instead of waking up into the fury and the madness and the chaos, I would wake up into peace and silence and solitude. I called it my morning sanctuary. Every day I would wake up at five in the morning and you know what? Nobody else was up. No emails were coming in. No text messages were coming in. No distractions, no interruptions, no obligations. None of that was active yet. I officially had time for myself. I had time to gather my thoughts. I had time to meditate. I had time to focus in on my goals and write my goals out and plan my day. By the time most people woke up, I had already completed my top three actions for the day before the distractions started. So here's the thing, waking up earlier, you beat the distractions. You get a head start before the distractions start coming in. So the best thing you could do is give yourself more time and that's by waking up earlier 
before all the madness and chaos ensues. Waking up earlier is by far the best way to avoid distractions because there are no distractions at five in the morning. And so you simply just get a head start before all the chaos gets started. Quite frankly, it's one of the reasons I created this five day challenge. I have something called the Rise and Grind five day challenge. Five days I'll get you to waking up at 5 a.m. If you're a person that says, you know what, there's no way in hell I'm waking up at five in the morning. I'm a night owl, I'm not a morning person. Trust me, I get it. I was not a morning person either until I became one. <laughs> it really just started with this one decision that yes, I want to become one. And the minute you make that decision, you absolutely can make the transition. There are some things that I've learned that helped me make that transition and I boiled it down into a five day challenge. So systematically each day, I'll teach you one technique and by the fifth day, you should be waking up at by 5 a.m. with no alarm clock. And so that's the, the Rise and Grind five day challenge. You would go to www.riseandgrindchallenge.com. So www.riseandgrindchallenge.com. And this is the site right here. And uh, so there's a little video here where I, I kind of talk you through a little bit of how the challenge works. You can read about some, some ways it's been impacting other people. And then here's kind of the format. Each day I send you a video lesson and one by one, I teach you these really small micro habits that all compact and build on top of each other so that by the fifth, and it makes it really easy and fun. And so by the fifth day, you're gonna be waking up, jumping out of bed at 5 a.m. like it's like a kid on Christmas morning, right? just excited and ready and hungry for the day. And so the, the challenge is $37. I guarantee it's probably the best $37 uh, you'll ever spend. So that's the Rise and Grind Challenge. And that is gonna be your key to your freedom and your success is start waking up earlier. That way you beat the distractions, you have your morning sanctuary, you can go get a workout in and get consistent with your fitness. You just got more peace and calm going into the day because you're not waking up right into the fury, right? That's it. Now it's your turn to go out there and become a hero. Check out the Rise and Grind Challenge. That's www.riseandgrindchallenge.com. And I'm looking forward to seeing you inside the challenge. All right, heroes, go out there and save the world.